Hello, my name is Ken Colgan with CAD Tech Seminars. You can find us on the web at therevitguys.com. In this video, we'll be showing you how to set up a site from CAD and bring it into Revit if it's giving you issues. So I'll bump, bump through a bunch of issues and try to get them straightened out. So here we go, we're in the Revit file. You can see we have a little building here. Um, currently, we have one point that is noted, and uh, I'm going to clean up both files quick and then I will we'll bring the files together. Uh, currently when I pick on this point you'll notice that the uh, coordinates are way out right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring these points back into play. Uh, we could leave these where they are but I just want to go back to zero. So I'm going to set that to zero and it's going to kind of freak out. It zips out to some la la land. I'm going to do zoom extents on that. I'll then grab on this guy and I'll put in uh, zero again. Okay. Uh, at this point ZE again and I roll in and you'll see the building. I'm not sure what's out in space, but there's something out there that's causing this to zoom out to these weird numbers. So what we have is now we have the project point, and if I turn it on VV for Vic, Victor Victor, I'll zoom in here. I'm going to go straight down to site. I'll click on site and expand that out. Turn on survey point. Hit OK. Uh, you'll notice that survey point and the actual uh, project point currently on top of each other. I just want to get the building back to we know where things are. So now I, I know where both points are. We'll reset those points later. Okay, so there we are in Revit. This is looking pretty good. I'm going to duplicate the site plan. Or, well, since I have, I'm in site plan, I'm going to go change it from project north to true north. We'll come back to that in a moment. But this site now is, is getting ready to be um, queued up to bring in the site plan. Let's switch over to AutoCAD. Now in AutoCAD, this is the actual site. Okay, now this is in, it's, we're in, uh, let me double click it back up here into paper space. You'll see we have the site, and I've got some things selected. So I'm going to jump in, uh, double click in the view, and I'll escape. Now, what I did was, let me hit, let's see if I can undo enough to get out of it. <coughs> there we go. I'll keep hitting undo till I get out of it completely. Now, what happens is sometimes when you get a model from an engineer, what happens is these elements are actually proxy objects. They come from uh, Civil 3D and stuff like that, and regular AutoCAD freaks out when it sees it. Um, you can do some things if you don't have, if the architect, excuse me, the survey guy doesn't convert it for you. Let's say the survey guy didn't convert it down to AutoCAD. I know that sounds crazy, but even though they're using Civil AutoCAD, they have to convert it back down to Vanilla AutoCAD. So let's say they don't. What we'll do is we can actually grab this element, we can explode it. So what I'm going to do is try to crush this thing down because currently these elements are 300 and something feet in the air and the rest of the elements are down on the ground. To see that, I'll hit the little house here. We'll spin the things around. Notice that the site map, which we can use in Revit to create a contour map, is at the actual elevation. So you can see it's like, what, 384 feet in the air over zero. So we can either move this stuff up or move this stuff down. That's up to you. But all we need in our model is just a clean site plan. So what we're going to do is we're going to let the survey guys do what the survey guys do, and we're going to go ahead and just clean this up so we can bring it in. So I'm back in my normal location, top view here. Now, what I'm going to do is grab the, uh, the stuff on top, and what these are, these are um, these elements here. I may have exploded already, but I grab this, and it's a block. So I'm going to type in E-X-P-L-O-D-E, -E, explode, right? Uh, and we've just exploded it. Now, these elements, you'll see it is a large element. I'm going to grab one, right click, select all instances. Okay, select similar. It's going to grab all the similar contour lines. And I'm going to crush them down to zero. Elevation varies, set it to zero. Because remember, I'm just using this as an underlay. Uh, those are crushed down to zero. I'm now going to grab this guy. Again, I will go ahead and um, it is up at um, some high elevation. So I will then go to uh, right click select similar, it's going to pick them up again, and I'm going to set them all down to zero. That's going to crush them again. Okay. So what's happened is they're now all down at zero. Once they're down at zero, we can also, I'm going to go back to that little 3D view, I'm going to try to move the text down. And the text might be a little harder to do, but I could take all this stuff and probably move it. Now, I wanted to kind of just see it. I'm not so worried about it, but you'll see it's kind of going up a hill there. If I take all this stuff and I'm putting a window around it, I'm not so used to that new tool yet. Click, click, right? and I'm going to move it. Move. Let's see if I can move it down. Okay, my UCS is not correct. UCS uh, view. Okay. So now what I did, I changed my UCS to this location. Move. Now do you have to do this? I don't know. I'm just going to bring these down also from base point here to about a base point about right here. So, uh, and it being a 3D elements doesn't look like that it wants me to do it. Alright, so, well, 
Let's see what we can get here. Put a window around them. Click. It's a crossing. Should grab them. Let's see how many objects we have. Um, we got a lot, but they're proxy objects, and we probably can't move them. Okay, so we're just going to assume we'll deal with that. Um, but that's all those points and all those data points. Now we probably could explode them. Let's try that. We might lose everything at this point. And it's running. It's doing something. Okay, let's see if we exploded the elements. We may have now. Whoop. Control Shift Tab. Sorry, I switched back there. We'll come back over here. I'm gonna put a window around them again. Ah, I'm still not used to that new window. Click. Click. Okay. Um, at that point, we'll hit the Move Command. Pick a base point and pick another base point. You can see the the information's coming down. Now, whether or not we'll be able to see it, I don't know. Take this information. Ah! Click. Click. Uh, and see if I can delete it out. See, it won't come out. So we may be able to see some information, maybe we don't, but really we just worried about the line work. And by exploding it, we may get more data. So at that point I exploded a bunch of times, and we go back, control shift tab, excuse me, to the top view. So all I'm doing here is trying to do the stuff that the um, maybe the surveyor uh, didn't do. So now if I come in here, so I can see a little bit more information, and I was hoping to get those contour lines right there. That's I want that in there so I can see it when it comes in. Some of this stuff may not even come in because it's uh, it's fancy data from the civil survey. survey. I'll go back to the top. Okay, so I'm looking at it from the top. I'll spin this thing around. One, two. Alrighty, come on. So here's where we are, and what I've done is I've, in essence, tried to clean it up the best I can without having uh, the civil software. Civil software will clean it up a lot better. Now I'm actually going to W block this thing out. So I'm going to type in W block. If you're not familiar with that, that stands for uh, write block. And I'm going to write it out to a file. Uh, I'm going to select objects. So select objects here. And I'm going to do a big old crossing. Uh, again, as that window, click once, drag, click again. Still not used to that jumping back and forth from Revit and AutoCAD. Now I've got a, a bunch of items. And I've got 7,202 items, as you can see there. I'll hit enter. Uh, at this point, it says pick a base point. Now, what I'm doing is, and if you've watched some of my other videos, I may have set the point first. I'm going to set the point second. I'm going to put my insertion point right there. Pow. Okay, so I have a, an insertion point that's a lot closer to what I can use. I'm going to call this, let's say, uh, we'll go hit this little button, and we're going to call this one, let's say, uh, site clean. Hit save. All right. We'll replace that existing. Now, what I've done is I've actually written out that file. Um, and the other thing we needed to do, which I forgot, so I'm actually going to write it out one more time, is I'm going to go back to layout. Now you'll notice in the layout that the the surveyor put the north arrow in the layout space. So now how, am I, how in the world am I going to set that angle? Because I need to know what true north is, and I also want to know the distance of some of these uh, areas, but there's not a lot of data in here. I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to hit Control C. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard, right? Double click into paper space, Control V, okay? and now I'm going to place it. Now it's very, very small, but I just want to verify, notice it's not at the right angle. You're like, what? How do you do that? How do you make it right? Okay, double click out again. Okay. Now, when I double click, let's go back in here. Double click in. Now when I'm in the view, you notice my UCS is at the wrong angle. I'm going to type in UCS, enter, view, enter, and see it sets it right. I click out here, and now I notice the UCS here and the UCS inside match. That's going to take this angle and copy it correctly. So I'm going to jump out of the view first. Okay, now there's actually a bonus tool that'll do this. It'll take elements and copy them from paper space to model space. I don't know if I even have those things loaded, so I'm just going to continue on. Grab it here, Control C, copy it to the clipboard, double click in the view, and I then Control V, and I place it. Now you'll notice that the angle of the two arrows are identical. I'll now grab that arrow, type in S C A L E, scale, enter. I'm going to pick a base point on the object, and I'm going to type in, I don't know, whatever, drag it, boom. Now I have a marker that matches that angle. Because it wasn't in model space, it was in paper space. That other one that was in here, the, since the UCS was, were not uh, aligned, it didn't work. So now I have that in model space. Back to model space, now I have a true north arrow, see that? So there we go. Now, I have to do a couple more things in here, and we'll write it out. Now I'm going to write this puppy out. We'll go ahead and do that. W block again, you see me do this. W block, enter, uh, pick a base point, we'll zoom in, pick that corner right there, and pick. Now we'll select objects, zoom out, and I'll use a big crossing, click, click, hit enter. We've written out 7,203 objects. 
um, units. I'm going to leave this unitless. Uh, I will de deal with it on the other side. Um, site clean, save, and hit OK. Replace it. Now we have to do one more thing. Uh, we need to know, see this building? This building is, a, is at some angle. Now if I go back to Revit, I'm going to switch back to Revit, you'll notice that the building is perfectly straight up. So we need to coordinate the, the orientation of the building and the site. So I'm going to go back to Revit, I mean AutoCAD here, and I'm going to draw a line. Now I'm assuming that this is straight up, okay, because of the north arrow. So I'm going to type a line from maybe right here. I'm going to pick on the element somewhere and I draw straight up. Yep, hold on. Uh, UCS view. Okay. Now, I had changed it earlier to uh, move things into Z coordinates. Uh, so we're going to say line, L I N E, enter from endpoint, and I'll pick the endpoint of right here. I'm going to draw my line straight up. I'll turn on ortho, which is F8, or notice it says 90 degrees, and I pick. Now, what am I doing here? Let's try that again. Something went, went awry for me. L I N E, enter from, from base point, drag straight up, and see if we can track it. Okay. Come on. Come on, mouse. Okay. At this point, I pick, and we have our angle. So that's straight up. Now, what I'm going to do is use my angling tools. Go up top to Home, Angular Dimension. I'm going to say from here to here. I place it. Now I'm going to zoom in and take a look at that angle. Now that angle is 57.8, but how how accurate is that that point? I mean, is it how many decimal places? So we're going to check that. I'm going to go up to my dimensions here. I'm going to go to pick on standard dimension and manage to style. Inside of here, I'm going to go back to standard, modify, and uh, maybe I'm moving a little fast for people who aren't that familiar with AutoCAD, but I'm going to go in here and see where we have the units here. See, it's not actually giving us a lot of, a lot of um, information. I'm going to change it to degrees, degrees, minutes, seconds, and I'm going to crank it up. Okay, so we're going to get some really high defined numbers here. I hit OK and I hit close. At that point we zoom in, say we have 57 degrees, 50 minutes. So there we go. Now we know what that angle is. So what does that mean for us? Well, We have to have these sites coordinated, right, back in Revit. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate True North in here. So you, this is Project North, but True North happens to be 57, let's get back to that number, 57 degrees, 50 minutes off of Project North. So let's set that. On the Manage tab, we'll go on across top, hit Manage. You'll see when it says Position, Coordinates, and Location. Under here, you'll see the coordinates, which we'll use in a little bit. And then you see Position. you see Rotate True North. When I pick on Rotate True North, we'll go ahead and save the project. So when I say Rotate True North, so it takes a moment. At this point, I'll just cancel out of that for a moment. You'll notice that it's rotating in some generic location. I'm going to tell it to note go and rotate off that corner that I think Charles set earlier. So I pick right there. Now at this point I'm going to type in the angle. Let's go back here. Back to AutoCAD. Now you'll notice that that's 5750 off of True no uh, Project North. And, well, it's 57 degrees 50 inches off of True North. Or 50 minutes. Excuse me. Let's go back. I'm trying to move fast here. Come back in here and we type that number in. So let's check it. 57, 50. Back in Revit. 57, 50. Okay. Uh, minutes, no seconds. Now we're going to rotate it east because that's the way it was going. At this point, while you're in this box, just go ahead and hit enter. Now you'll notice that the project actually rotated that location. We'll go ahead and reset these back to 00, zero again. I'll grab this guy hit on him setting to zero and then I click on this guy and we're going to set him to zero also. So now we've got everybody lined up nice and happy. I know you're going well what does that mean to me? Now both worlds can align. We'll now go back out and we're going to go back to AutoCAD. Now we wrote this out and I want you to notice the orientation of the building here and, and north to the orientation here. I'm even going to turn on the, the little sun path Okay, sun path on. Let's zoom out. I don't even see it, so I'm not sure what happened there. We'll just go ahead and turn it back off again. But the sun path, you would have seen that it was actually in that location. 
So let's bring the sites in together. I go up top, I'd insert, link CAD. What is the CAD I'm going to bring? Link, I'm going to do the site clean. Because the coordinates that the original uh, site had was like a million feet or 10 million feet off. And that's just going to throw Revit into a tizzy. So by resetting where I want it at zero, I can bring it in. Now we're going to reset the origin or the coordinates as we move forward. But here we go, site clean. At this point, preserve. I can preserve the colors or change them. I'm going to leave them preserved right now. If you want to change them later, you can. I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to say a unit in AutoCAD is feet. By default, it's set to auto detect, but it's trying to figure it out. It may think it's meters or who knows what. I'm going to tell it what it is. At this point, I'm just going to let it go auto center to center, and I hit OK. When it comes in, we should get the site basically lining up. Now it looks like we've uh, something got whacked out there. Let's see. So it's coming in different. Ah, my UCS is set to view. Okay. I'm going to undo that. Let's go ahead and delete that out. It was me messing with those points. Go back to AutoCAD. I'm going to W block it again. Uh, UCS world. All right. Now, at this point, where UCS, a uh, Y and a X should all be set correctly. Uh, UCS. Okay, we'll set it to the world coordinates, so we're, no, we're normal. Now, in theory, it, it should write out fine. We'll try that again. W block, enter, pick a base point, zoom in and find it, there it is. Select objects, Oop, doing that goofy thing again, click, click, all right. So now at this point we hit enter, selected the objects. So now we're going to go ahead and say we're going to output it to a new block. We're going to test drive this thing, make sure it works right. I could type it here, just come out here, I'm going to call it site clean. Uh, I'm going to put a number two behind it. That way we're not overriding anything from before. And we can check it, save, and we hit OK on that. So now it writes it out. Let's check it out now. Drop this down, open, drawing. I'm going to go to my desktop. That's where everything kind of just sitting right now. Site clean two. And we're going to open it up and hopefully it looks fine. So there it is. Um, there's the site and the coordinates are a lot closer now. So if I turn the cords on down here we can see it. Okay, well we're not going to worry about that. Let's go ahead and uh, back to Revit. Insert link CAD. We scroll on down. We pick site clean 2. At this point here, preserve feet Orientate, orientate to view and we should hit open and it should come in this time. There it is. I want you to notice the relationship of the angle of this relation to the angle of this. Notice how it came in quite nicely. By us exploding the data and squishing it, now see how that information is actually seen here? So it was one way to get around it because maybe we weren't able to get the data from the architect or the survey or whoever it may be. So now we'll actually use some information we have and align both of these. I'm going to take this CAD file. I'm going to grab the CAD file. And again, I'm not sure if it's the roof corner or the edge corner or whatever we have. I'm just going to move this from right here. And if you know better what, where it needs to move, you go ahead and move it. So I'm going to set it from the end point of there. I'm going to zoom up a little bit. And I'm going to bring the data into that point right here. Again, zoom in and grab the end point of right there. And place it. So now what we've done is we've lined those two, bu two, two buildings up. So we should be good to go. You may want to check your numbers, check your lines, make sure everything's lined up. And as I zoom out, you will see that the CAD file underneath here, it, uh, there it is. Now, if you don't like the look and feel of the CAD file underneath, we can adjust it. Now, I'll show you how to do that real quick. You'll notice it's going slow. It's because of that, 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 that CAD file slowing things down. We'll touch on those in a moment. You type in VV as in Victor Victor. You go over here to imported categories, and you'll see there is the original, which we probably want to get rid of. That may be the reason things are um, trying to zoom way out in the space. So that guy's in here, and he's causing the, the file to probably kind of zoom out to well, La La Land. Now, if I if I drop this down, you'll see these are all the layers that are actually being utilized by those points. Now sometimes it's hard to know what's, what's going on, so I'm going to show you a trick here. If I grab this element, the CAD file, you go ahead and grab the CAD file. See it says Query. This is an awesome tool. You hit Query. You zoom in on a point or something you want to turn off. 
and you see it says topo data right there, I grab it. It tells you what layer it's on and you can say hide in view and notice that it hides the data. So now that data is hidden and now we have a pretty clean looking site. The only other thing we um, have to do now is we have to go turn it off in the other views. But let's go check out your regular floor plan. You'll notice that in the floor plan here the relationship uh, matches. So there it is. Go ahead and grab it again and we can then use that query. Uh, go ahead and pick on that element and then tell it to hide in view. We'll get rid of all those points. So that's how we can utilize this. If you don't want to see this in the view, the whole file, just type in VV and you can come up top here and say imported categories do not show it in this view and it'll hide in that view. Okay. So you have the ability to hide it. I think I half toned it <laughs> instead of hide it. Excuse me, hit it. So go back to imported categories and you can actually turn it off here. So if you want to turn it off or half tone it, there's a couple of tricks. You can even change the colors. Uh, that's a way to bring it in. You can also isolate it per view. You'll notice that it came in every view here, which is crazy. Okay, What you may consider doing is just bring the site plan into the site plan view. To do that, you go up top and when you do link CAD, there's a simple button here that makes a big difference. See it says current view only. You turn that on and it only brings it into this current view and that way it doesn't propagate through all your other views. So you may consider that when you're doing it. And now our site is set right now. The only thing that's not right on here are the points, right? Because remember, if I was to ID one of these points, it's not right. For instance, I go up top and I say, annotate spot coordinate. I pick the corner of that building or I pick the corner of this building. You'll notice that the numbers are wonky. If I wanted them to be true to the survey, now we don't have to do this if you don't want to, but if you want to be true to the survey, you have to align the points and I'll show you that now. But you want to do this after the model has been rotated true north so everything expands in the right direction. So here's our final, uh, the final thing here. We have to know a point. Once we know the point, we can ID the point and then we'll test drive it. So let's go ahead and use this corner of the building again. So in the corner of the building, now I'm noticing the one little line looks off and again you have to check your drawings on that. Um, you may also just reference to the site plan, say so see site plan for information. So I come in here and I'm going to use that point, I'm going to ID it, type in ID, enter, uh, select the point, and get in there and pick right there, right and let me pick it, okay. So there's the point. Now if I pull this box up, we should be able to see that point that's been ID'd and it's a big old monster number back in Revit. We'll now go up top and we'll do the same thing. It's under Manage, Coordinates, and you can say specify coordinates at a point. So I come in here and I pick that point. Now at this time north and south will equal to y. So I'll come down here and what is y? So I'm going to come into here. You see y is this big old number. So I'm going to take that number, copy it because my typing sucks. So I can take the whole number, grab the whole number, copy it. I'm going to go back to Revit and I'll put it in the y location which would be north south. I'm going to put the foot mark behind it so it knows its feet for sure. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to AutoCAD because again my typing sucks and I'm going to take that number, I'm going to highlight it, Control C for copy, go back to Revit and I'll place it in here, Control V and I'll put a foot behind it to make sure. When I hit OK on that, now I can also set the elevation, I think it was at about 385, um, we'll go as 385. Go ahead and hit OK on that. Now boop, you'll notice that one of the markers have gone away, that is the site or the corner of the site, but this one's right probably related to state plane coordinates, I'm not actually sure. Now it's time to ID the point. I go up top, annotate, spot coordinate. I pick that point again, I drag up and I drag over and that number should match the number we just got from here. Back to the AutoCAD world and let's say it's uh, 875, notice 875, 8645, 875 and that's about you know, eight tenths. There you go. So now all of our worlds are, have come together and uh, and we're good to go now. So this little element in here, we could have deleted it before we W blocked it out, but I just wanted to verify that all my pieces came together. Now remember it's linked files, right? So I could go back into AutoCAD, go back to the site clean, go ahead, delete these points out of here, save it. Now it's saved. Go back to Revit. Here I'm in Revit. Go back to Manage, Links. Now again, how you get to that, that's up to you. And then tell it to refresh, reload. And if all goes well, uh, we should see that line disappear. 
So uh, hit OK on that. And if it didn't, I'll probably just delete it from the wrong file. But there you go. So hopefully that explains how to get this done. I know it was a bit of a long video, but we had to cover a lot of stuff in, um, to get this right. So there you go. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Um, my name is Ken Colgan. I'm with CAD Tech Seminars um, on the web at therevitguys.com. Thank you.